Hi guys, so a bit of an unplanned video today, but when I posted my Finance 101 video, I actually had a few people, quite a few people, say they'd never heard of sinking funds before, which really surprised me because whilst I haven't used them in the past, I always knew what they were and I thought it was a pretty well-known concept. So what I thought I would do is make a very quick video, hopefully very quick, just explaining sort of the concept of what sinking funds actually are and then tell you about the sinking funds that I have and how I use them. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump straight in. So firstly, what actually are sinking funds? So sinking funds are essentially different pots of savings that you're creating for different purposes. This can either be costs that you know are going to come up definitely or ones that probably will come up at some point, but you don't know when or how much for. So as an example, you might have MOT on your car every single year and every single year you're like, oh, it's like 240 pounds that I have to pay. Well, what you could do is set up a sinking fund for your car MOT and because you know it's going to be 240 pounds, split that into a monthly payment of 20 pound a month and put that aside. This is not the way that I personally use them because for me, because I budget sort of two years in advance, which I know people find strange, but it works for me. Any costs that I know that are gonna come up, such as a car MOT, which I don't have anymore because I had to give up my car when I moved here. But, you know, if there are costs that I know are going to come up, I just budget for them like 100% of that cost in that particular month and then make sure I decrease expenses around it. So that works for me, but obviously if it's easier for you to just put a little bit of money aside for these known expenses, then it probably makes sense to do that. The second way to use sinking funds, and this is the way that I use it, is for those expenses that probably will come up at some point, but you're not sure how much or when. In terms of examples, well, you'll get plenty because I'm gonna go through all the ones that I hold, but just as a final point, um, in terms of the reasons to have sinking funds, I didn't have them for a long time. I didn't really believe in them. For me, it was a case of, well, I'm just gonna have one big sort of savings account and if there are any unexpected expenses, I can just take it out from that. But whilst that worked for me, whilst I was building up um, an emergency fund, now that I have that, I kind of want to leave it untouched in a savings pot somewhere. And with sinking funds, for me, it's just easier to have them in an easy access account. So I have mine in Monzo. I know other people, you know, if they don't like tech and, and things like that, they might use like cash envelopes and that works too. For me, I use Monzo pots because it's so easy to just set up loads of pots for different things and you can even have like pretty pictures and stuff on it um, for each account. So uh, as a quick example, I have one for pets and I have pictures of my cats on there. So it just helps with visualizing what you're saving for. And in my mind, psychologically, it helps you not spend that money. If I can see, for example, the pet account, if I can see that if I take money out of that account to spend on something else, I'm taking away from the pets, then that might make me think twice. Whereas if I have this big pot of money somewhere, it doesn't feel as, as big of a deal if I just take some money out. So hopefully that makes sense. And I quite like just saving money, um, putting money aside for these different things. Um, and once they become decent amounts, I will sort of probably move them to better interest sort of accounts because at the moment obviously the Monzo ones aren't very high but to be honest there's not that much out there that is very high and I like like I said the easy accessibility of the Monzo ones. In terms of how I fund them so for me it's basically any money that I might have left over so any sort of windfall cash that I get or if I had budgeted um, I don't know 200 pounds in a month for food but to only spend, I don't know, 180, then that 20 pound I would sort of distribute between my sinking funds. So they are quite new. It's, it's a recent thing that I've started doing because obviously I had become completely debt free back in December. So it's not been that long since I've sort of started really um, ramping up the savings and the majority of my extra money that I get goes either in my company accounts, which I'm not touching, or 
my Poland house builds fund. So there's not that much that I'm currently putting towards these sinking funds because they're just not a priority. But any little windfall, windfalls like that, I just put into these accounts. Anyway, enough waffling now. I'm going to just quickly take you through the different sinking funds that I have. So the first one for me might seem a little bit weird if you're in the UK, um, but it is actually like a health expenses account. And the reason I have it is because quite often I've been sort of bitten by health expenses that I've had to pay. And it's silly. It can be silly things like just a trip to the dentist, which even if you go on the NHS, it's not free. Um, or something like recently I had to get a crown done and the crown itself was £600 and then it had a bit of a knock-on unexpected effect where because the crown was a slightly different size to my normal tooth, um, my retainer then didn't fit so I had to get the retainer redone which was an extra £150 and it's, it's little things like that that can just pop up out of nowhere and they can hurt, like £850 was a lot to have as an unexpected expense. So obviously I just took that out of my emergency fund, but I quite like the idea of just putting some money aside for stuff like that. And um, often when I go to Poland as well um, for visits, I go and see doctors privately and stuff because sometimes I'm a bit of a hypochondriac and I don't like um, straining the NHS as much. And sometimes it's hard to just get like checkups on the NHS um, when it comes to like specialist areas so I basically just go privately and because I've got access in Poland um, it's a lot cheaper than it is going here. The next one for me is travel so I absolutely love traveling and I don't want to you know stop going on holidays just because I've got these sort of financial goals um, so I've got a sinking fund for travel. Um, this will be anything from sort of weekends away or trips to Poland or bigger holidays. So it just makes the cost of a holiday not seem as daunting. So I think I've got about £500 in there at the moment, which isn't a huge amount of money, but that will massively lessen the blow if I do end up going on a holiday ever again, because let's face it, it currently seems like we're never going anywhere. The next one for me is Christmas and birthdays. So again, something that we know happens every year. I do have a bit of a budget set aside in my main sort of budget for things like Christmas and then like birthdays of people that I know um, when they're coming up and how much I'm going to allocate. But sometimes there's a bit of unexpected expense and it is just nice to know that I'm sort of building a little bit of a cushion for extra gifts or um, sort of unexpected events uh, where you need to get presents like, I don't know, baby showers. The next one I've set up is home repairs. So whilst when I think about this um, as a sinking fund, I'm actually thinking about this more long term for, for example, my Poland house. It's kind of naive to think that I'm never going to need anything repaired in this flat. So it's good to just get a handle on it and set aside some money for should the unexpected happen. Um, you know, I live on my own. I don't have someone um, like a partner who will just fix things. So if anything happens, I will have to pay to get them fixed. So it's just putting money aside for little things like that. The next one I've already mentioned and it is pets. So um, obviously my pets are not with me now. Um, they moved to Poland with my parents um, and they're living with my parents, which is pretty sad and I miss them. And if you have pets, you will understand me. And if you don't have pets, then you're gonna think I'm just a crazy cat lady, but they are literally like my children and I miss them so much. But anyway, I've set up this sinking fund for pets because pet insurance firstly isn't really a thing in Poland. So knock on wood, should anything happen to them, I will have to cover the vet costs. Um, this goes for both like when I'm living here and when I actually move back to Poland. And also I sort of contribute as well to their food and stuff at the moment because I don't want my parents to just constantly foot the bill for their costs. Um, when they're my cats. So I'm hoping to build this up um, as a much bigger pot before I actually move to Poland because I'm planning to take on more pets um, and I want to have that cushion behind me. And the final one that I've set up is a fun pot. So 
anything sort of extra I will put in the fun pot and this will be for any sort of unexpected things that I want to do like um, you know when things reopen going to the pub or something like that so I think it is good to have a fun pot in your budget and again it just softens the blow a little bit when you go on an unexpected night out and whilst I'm much better at budgeting now and I'm not really going to be you know blowing my money on nights out um, the same way that I used to it's still nice to have that kind of backup to help so hopefully that's been useful for those of you who don't have sinking funds or if you do and you're nosy like me because I actually love watching people's videos on this um, even though I have a good grasp on it so hopefully you've enjoyed this video and that I'll see you in the next one Bye.